Hello and welcome. My name is Mikael Sjöholm and I work as a senior scientist at uh, DTU Wind and Energy Systems. I work in the section of metrology and remote sensing. And today I will introduce you to remote sensing for wind energy. I will talk about some basic concepts. And the learning objectives uh, for today is that you will actually be able to do remote sensing of the wind by your own. This is a very ambitious objective, but you will see what it means soon. And you should also be uh, able to describe the basics of wind remote sensing devices and perform some very basic wind related calculations uh, in regard to remote sensing. So I start with a question to you. Have you ever done remote sensing of the wind? Well, we might have a bunch of experts here that are used to uh, work with remote sensing instruments for wind but most of you have probably not done that. But you have probably been uh, sensing the wind remotely. Because you can just watch out for the window or go out into nature and look at different structures like trees and plants and see how they move with the wind. And, and use the Bufor uh, scale here uh, to, to uh, say something about the wind. Th this has been known for hundreds of years. You can take some uh, minutes to, to read this through, so you can take a small pause in the, the video, and I will soon be back. This way of remote sensing of the wind is of course not accurate enough for the requirements for the wind energy industry. Uh, but still, this uh, concept can, can be used in some sense, because this scale originated for, from the sailors. Originally it was based on how the sail looked like in different wind conditions and later on how the waves were looking, the roughness of, of the sea. Uh, you can see some kind of roughness here. And this is actually used in remote sensing from satellites uh, where they use radars to, to measure the roughness of the ocean uh, surface and from that determine the winds uh, globally over uh, the waters. But uh, I just mentioned the word radar, so let's look a little more about that. All these are uh, remote sensing devices and they have a structure of the name in common. They all end with the detection and ranging. They are all using waves, but different kinds of waves. The radar and lidar are using electromagnetic waves, radio and light waves, and the solar is using sound for doing this kind of measurements. And they all rely on the Doppler effect. You are probably, you have been in situations where you have uh, been listening to an ambulance or a police coming by or someone you know, out driving the sports car with some high uh, music tune on. Then if you are in front of the car, you will have a, hear a little higher pitch and behind you will hear a little lower. And if you have the music here, maybe you get annoyed because it doesn't sound as it should. Uh, and then you call the police and they might come and uh, check the speed of the car. And then they typically use some kind of remote sensing device. In this case, we have um, a frequency shift that actually is the double of, of what you get when you have uh, uh, yes, transmitting the sound from the, from the vehicle. But in this case, you send some, some waves and they uh, bounce off from the moving target and they come back with the frequency shift that is uh, uh, proportional to the wind speed and uh, with the, the wavelength of the radiation uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the formula also. And uh, when we are doing remote sensing of the wind, uh, I'm mainly talking from the perspective of, of LIDARs, we often use coherent detection. And that means that we are sending out uh, light and a certain frequency and then we detect uh, light that comes back that has been uh, shifted in frequency due to this Doppler effect and then we mix them together on a, an optical detector and uh, here we can see how we add the electrical fields and then we take the square of that to get out uh, the detected signal and if we then take the square of this we can recognize we will have a term that is the cross term between this cosine and this cosine and then we can go to the storage room for old uh, trigonometric relations and uh, find this one 
where you have a, a product of two cosines that can be expressed like a, a, a sum of these two terms and the difference of them. And in this case, the sum will be a very high frequency oscillation that we cannot detect. But at this difference frequency, we can detect that uh, quite easily with the modern electronics and some Fourier transforms. And uh, the shift we, we will get is then typically this one, the, the delta F. You have the, the wavelength for a typical uh, laser-based uh, uh, LiDAR uh, remote sensing device. This uh, wavelength is one and a half micrometers. So you can uh, think a little bit what kind of frequency are we talking about here uh, when we have, say, 10 meters per second that we are trying to measure. Yes, we go, we go on to the next slide. I think you have been thinking about this now. And one important aspect of uh, all these remote sensing devices is that they are only measuring uh, the component of the wind that is along uh, the laser beam for a LiDAR, for instance. We can imagine we have a LiDAR over here, sends out laser light along this beam, and then you have a wind vector here. The only thing that uh, the LiDAR sees and measures with this Doppler uh, shift is the component along this beam. So it means that it's the projection of this wind speed, the cosine of this angle uh, and uh, the speed, and then you measure something uh, along the line of sight. And there are two, in principle, two different kinds of uh, remote sensing devices. Now I mainly talk about the LiDAR, but it's going to also be applicable in other uh, cases. We have the pulsed concept and uh, for getting the range uh, resolution. And in this case, we send out a short pulse. It's illustrated here by this white, uh, white uh, box. And it travels uh, a distance r until it hits some kind of target. It could be some dust or ash or pollen or spray, something small particles in the air. And then it bounces back into the, the detection system of the LiDAR. So it has traveled two times the distance with the speed of light. So if you then recall this time result, you get information about where you did the measurements. And then you can have a lot of different uh, range gates and get uh, range result measurements uh, along this path. But you can also do uh, remote sensing with continuous wave uh, sources. That's maybe intuitively very difficult to understand because the whole concept of the detection and ranging that we talked about was based on that you send out a pulse and then you measure how long time it takes for it to come back. But in a continuous wave uh, uh, system, you, you don't have pulses, but you're shining the light all the time. And in that case, we have to take one point at a time. And that we can do by focusing uh, the light into one position. So if you're interested in measurement around this distance r, we focus the light here, and then we get sort of an average over uh, uh, a small uh, distance with an averaging weighting function looking like that. And if you then focus further away, this becomes wider. And uh, it becomes wider in a way you can, you can measure this width of it here by this formula. It's two times this uh, Rayleigh range. And that is depending on the distance to where you are measuring squared. And it also depends on the size of the aperture, the lens that you are using to focus your light, how wide that is. So this is the radius of, of this uh, optics that you are using. And um, I will, as an analogy, I will show some photos here. We are taking three, have taken three photos of the same uh, setup. So you have a wind turbine, it's sharp in all three pictures. But you can take a few seconds to think about what is the difference between these pictures. Probably you, you can see uh, the difference in the sense that the, the left one, the one over here, here, yeah, it's quite blurry in the background. 
In, in the middle, you can see some more of the structures of the tree here. You couldn't really imagine that it was a tree in the left picture. And here you can actually see the branches of, of the tree. So, so that means that we get the sharp image not only on the turbine in this case, but not super sharp, but a little sharper in the background, which is not the case to, to, the, to the left. So then you can think about what is the difference. It's the, it's the same camera, same place, same uh, everything almost, but there is one major difference between them and it's the setting of the camera. The difference is of course the opening uh, aperture, how big it is. So here I have put on the F numbers. We have used uh, 1.8 over here. You get the very sharp uh, uh, turbine in a in a very shallow uh, depth of field, but then, then you increase this F number, you get uh, a sharper image over a longer range. And that corresponds then, of course, to different sizes of the aperture, as we saw in the previous formula. Uh, since it's a 50 millimeter uh, lens, uh, uh, focal, uh, focal length, you, you get a diameter that is almost 28 millimeter here and only four and a half here. So that means the bigger lens you use, the, the more shallow you can get this depth of field. And that means in terms of, uh, of getting um, very detailed measurement in one location, you, you should aim for doing the continuous wave measurement very close to the instrument and with uh, very huge uh, optics compared to if you're in this case. Because in this case, if you're interested in the wind close to the wind turbine, you might also pick up wind from far, from far behind. And, uh, and that has an influence on, on how you actually are filtering the turbulence that you are measuring. Because that's a notorious thing with remote sensing devices compared to in situ measurements. And that is that you measure over some kind of probe volume as illustrated here with this uh, white uh, curves in the bottom. So by this we have come to the summary of this lecture and uh, hopefully now you have learned how you can measure the wind by just looking around you. It was a very ambitious learning objective that you should be able to do some remote sensing but in a sense you can go back to this scale of different uh, uh, wind speeds and correlate it with what you are seeing outside. And then you have learned some basic principles of wind remote uh, sensing devices. You can tell something about the Doppler principle and uh, that you only measure uh, along the line of sight component of the wind of the instrument. And you also have some uh, basic calculations of this in your, uh, with you today. And you can also describe the difference between pulsed and continuous wave uh, LiDAR systems and understand where you get a small uh, sampling volume with the continuous wave system. So by that we are looking into the next lecture and that's lecture number two about remote sensing for wind energy and that's more about applications where we start with some basic principles of uh, remote sensing of several wind components, not just one, and we look at some applications of um, the remote sensing techniques in the wind energy. So thank you for for this lecture and see you in the next.